Hey guys, welcome to the Garillon video encounter guide. As always, I'm World Boss. Garillon's a one phase encounter, so we're right into the kill video already. Uh, it's a it's a pretty simple fight in terms of execution and strategy. The big thing you'll notice with this fight is, as you can see right now, there's multiple health bars. His legs are individual bosses from his body. Every time you kill a leg, it slows his movement speed by 30% and deals 3% damage to Garillon himself. Now, the trick is that you can also see little blue broken circles under his legs. Um, under those circles, actually I guess they're green. Under the circles, when you're standing in it, to that leg you will gain 100% increased damage done. So that's the main reason other than the slow that you really want to be focusing those legs hard. The reason you don't want the range doing it is obviously because they have to move the cast. The second reason is any melee with a cleave type ability it will reflect the additional 100% damage to the body. Rogues with Blade for Fury, Warriors with Sweeping Strike, things of that nature. Of course, as a range, you can help out. You can, you know, toss in your executes as well as, you know, start pre-prepping pre the legs that the melee aren't on. And if you happen to be, you know, in, in a circle for the increased damage, by all means, take advantage of it. However, just running all around the room is not going to help you at all. The purple circle underneath him, that's no man's land. You go there, your healers are going to hate you, your raid leader is going to hate you, you very, very well may wipe the raid. You go under there, you cause an extra crush. If you're still standing it, when the crush hits, you're going to die. Now, due to the mechanics of this, tank, of this fight, you don't really have a tank taking melees or anything. He does do a furious swipe. If two players are not in that furious swipe, then he'll gain a damage debuff on um, damage increased damage buff as well as a movement speed buff so the crushes really start hurting a lot more as well as the swipes and this affects stacks now what he does he actually fixates on the player who has the pheromones the first player to get the pheromones is going to be the first one that engages him in pretty much in melee combat so you want to ensure that you allow your tank to get in and get that first now, the pheromone stacks. As it stacks, you take more damage, as well as it permeates to the raid with the raid taking more damage. For that case, you don't want a tank running up to, say, 25, 30, 40 stacks just because they have defensive cooldowns for it. It's just going to be way too much damage for the raid to deal with, as well as the damage they're going to take later on. Additionally, the crushes themselves, they're really not a lot of damage unless he has some fury strikes. You know, crush very easily healed up if you watch the, the uh, grid you can see just the damage isn't overwhelming now the pheromones will drop these puddles on the ground they start as a orange dot and then will spread now the damage from these radiates out past the circle so be aware of that you will be taking damage if you're overlapping them tightly now, you do want to start on the outer edge of the room and, and keep them wrapped around as tight as possible so you're not running out of space the last half you know, half a minute to a minute of the encounter because if, if you're spacing them out too much, space will come and become a constraint and it'll be very, very hard to stay out of the furious swipe range. That's the secondary concern of the um, pheromone players. They want to be out of that furious swipe range because with the pheromone damage, that swipe will most likely kill you. So... You do that, the pheromones stay on you, the stacks continue building, and it puts your raid in a really bad situation, especially those healers. Now, what we did is at 15 stacks, we would call it out. We would have a, have a, have a raid-wide cooldown popped, and somewhere between 15 and 20 is when we would make the pass to the next player. The reason between 15 and 20 is we always waited until immediately following a Furious Swipe. Unless you were the last player in the rotation giving it back to the tanks, in which case they, they really weren't concerned if they got hit by one. Immediately following the Pheromones, he will do his crush, so at that point in time, you do want uh, you know, to pop either just before or just after things like Vampiric Embrace, Ancestral Guidance, to aid the healers with the healing. We use Bloodlust on the pull, and the reason being, obviously, that's when everyone has all their cooldowns up, that's when everyone is in position, that's when we have the most legs up. 
You need eight players for your rotation of the pheromones, and then you can start back over. Healing for Garalon is pretty straightforward, though it is fairly intense. Two things you want to look out for are when the pheromone stacks start getting high on the kiter, that's when you're going to see a lot more of the, the ticking AoE damage. That's when you went, we started rotating um, our Devo auras and Demo banners, that sort of stuff, to just kind of keep up and minimize that damage as, as much as possible while you know dropping all of our AoE healing as much as we can be stacked up and running Haas, running um, Discipline, Spirit Shell for each crush, that sort of thing. So you're going to look for the burst damage from the crush. You just want to keep people safe so they're not going to die at that point, you know, from the crush damage and from the actual ticking AoE, just long enough to, for you to get caught up after those crushes. Um, the Pheromone people will be taking a lot of damage. You do want a very strong single target healer on them. In our case, we used a Holy Paladin with a Disc Priest backup. Um, and the Disc Priest was on the tanks. So those two are kind of off doing their own thing. They also had the ability to heal themselves, which was another important reason for choosing those two particular classes. Um, I mean, as far as healing goes, it's a lot of burst damage and a lot of keeping up just with the general ticking. So if you can keep yourself stacked and keep your ground AoE down as much as possible, that's, that's going to be key to the fight. Well, that concludes our guide for Garalon. I hope you found it helpful. As always, subscribe up above. There's also links to just our normal kill videos with our mumble, as well as our other guides. Thumbs us up. Subscribe if, you, if this helped you at all. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask. Good luck.